for another show with the great Nate Newton. My name's John Radigan. I've been talking to Yakin about sports around here for all these years. But uh, Nate, Nate, he played the game. And now Nate has the opportunity to just look you right in the eye and say, Let me tell you something, man. I'm just glad to be here, John. I'm glad to be able to talk sports. I'm glad to be able to give my opinion. And I hope it's worthy of the listenership. Yeah, let me tell you something. It's the name of the show, by the way. Keep that in mind. Yes. And, uh, you know, tell your friends about it because uh, we have a lot of fun talking sports. Of course, there's lots of Cowboys on this, but you know if you've watched this show, Nate's a big Celtics fan, uh, knows a lot about the NBA. Don't discount his knowledge yes. about the NBA, people. This oh, man yeah. can talk NBA, and, of course, we'll talk everything else, too, Mavs and Stars and Rangers and I don't know what all. But, uh, Nate... Let's start with the Cowboys, man. It's these OTAs, organized team activities. This is sort of the last round of that. They'll have some mini camps and so forth. But, uh, um, you know, organized team activities. What is this? What is this? What's happening? It's about the rookies and the veterans and the coaches and everybody getting together, uh, getting to know each other, number one, getting to know the basics of the schemes, uh, the techniques of, that they're going to use within these schemes and, you know, your responsibilities. Uh, just it, it's kind of a filling out process. And for some guys, it's just to say, hey, hey, what you do, been doing this offseason? A lot of guys, uh, one or two guys won't be there. You know, that happens every year. But basically, it just brings you together, gives you the basic knowledge of the uh, offense and defense and special team schemes. That way, when you go to training camp, you won't go to a cold turkey. You'll have a idea. And if you know mentally, a lot of times you can play faster physically. Is it is it boring for veterans, especially, you know, a guy who's been there for quite a few years? Not a guy that's trying to improve. Yeah. Not a guy that's working on his craft. You know, but you got some guys like like old Nate New. Now used to just go to have fun and laugh and crack jokes. I used to be, uh, I used to at least twice a day. One of one of the coaches, position coach or the head coach, gonna be say, "Hey man, can you stop jacking around over there and pay attention?" <laughs> I was at least gonna have one or two of them a day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nate's the Nate's the class clown. Oh yes, sir. Yeah. The oh, fattest, yeah. biggest class clown you ever see. Yeah. <laughs> jolly, jolly man. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. So, um, uh, the, and you mentioned, you know, every time there's a few people not there, it seems there are like like there are a lot of people very concerned, uh, not so much about C.D. Lamb. We kind of expected that. He's trying yeah. to get a contract extension. But they're concerned about Micah Parsons not being there. Is this a concern for you, Nate? No, no. One thing that I, uh, I say a lot of crazy things about Mike, a lot of, things that people don't agree with about Michael, but I think he's smart and I think he's intelligent. Uh, he'll keep up. Uh, Zimmer have him uh, on, on point and ready to go. So uh, I'm not, I'm not concerned as long as when the, all the mandatory stuff pops up that he's there doing what he has to do. Uh, focus. Uh, a, a lot of times we, we, uh, we look at these young kids and, uh, and we, you know, we want them to do what we think is right, you know. And a lot of times, like I say, for OTAs, for your quarterbacks, uh, your wide receivers, guys like that, are uh, young guys, veterans trying to make it. These, these are some crucial times for these guys. And everybody um, has a different uh, point in their life where, okay, it is is not as important. It's always any team time is it very important. But to some guys, it's, it's not a high priority. I mean, uh, OK, so uh, we see that Micah is doing the boxing training again this offseason. It seemed to help him, uh, you know, be stronger here right last year. Is this uh, is this a worthy endeavor, do you believe, as a form of training for him? I, I believe that in-house training uh, is the best training. These these owners and, and coaches and staffs have put together some of the best people for your position, for your body type uh, that you can find in the world. It's nothing that this boxing guy can give you that your guy, be it a trainer, be it a, 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 a weight uh, instructor, 
a strength guy, they can give you these same things. And better still, they can bring in guys that is, is just as good as your guy. Now, people have personal preferences. And you can't you can't take that away from people. They feel more comfortable. They feel good. And a lot of times, as long as you come in there ready to run, rip, and do your job, a lot of people won't have anything to say. All right, so we both overlapped with Too Tall. The boxing seemed to work out okay for Too Tall. Yeah, until he ran into that little short guy, almost knocked him out in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the boxing didn't work in football. I mean, it didn't right. work in boxing. It worked in football. <laughs> football, yes, it yeah. did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, let me ask you this about Micah. Um, with regard to the position, that he's playing, right? I mean, he, he, I felt like he had, you know, he did show some improvement at the beginning of last year, but then wore down again toward the end of the year. Is this, is this just, um, simply him, you know, battling against these bigger men every game and just getting worn out? Yes, sir. The bottom yeah. line is you, 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 you didn't do this in college. You didn't build up a, a tolerance. Your body didn't build up a tolerance for this in college. And you come into the pros in your rookie year, you run around as a, a linebacker slash pass rusher. And then you designate yourself as a defensive end. Every offensive coordinator with a team worthy of playing you licked their chops and started laughing. I try to tell everybody who would listen to knowledge. I told everybody before this show was even named, let me tell you something. I told everybody, <laughs> let me tell you something. If I know Michael Parsons is going to spend 70% of his time to the right of me at the end of the defensive, at the end of the defensive line, and I got all this other field to work with, he does not scare me. Pass rush. Maybe. Everything else, no. I will find, mm -hmm. I will put tight ends over there. I will bring the blockers to cross body block him. I will trap him. I will wham him. And by the end of the game, if, if, if we're not down, we're just even, and I can run the ball, he will not be a factor. And that is what happens to Michael every year. He starts out fresh. He beats everybody up, but as the season goes on and packages get bigger and bigger and more specific to him, he wears down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so in the new uh, scheme, and, and we didn't get a, a big chance to talk about what Zim is bringing to the table when you had gone to to see the rookie camp and you chatted with your your old former, uh, you know, a coach and, and a guy who was on Jimmy's staff, Mike Zimmer. Um, so. With Zim in there, will this allow Micah to play to his strength more? Will there be more of sort of that hybrid where he'll be linebacker some and, and defensive end some, or, or how do you see that playing out? I, I just know Zim is going to try to put him in a position to win and be successful. I think Q did try to do the same thing. Coach Quinn tried to do the same thing, but Mike was so entrenched in being over there at the defensive end spot at the end of the line. So it just kind of dominated. And when you play at the level for his sacks that he played, it's kind of hard to argue with him. Uh, Zim is going to try to, you know, negotiate this thing where this kid can, can, can still get his rushes in, but just make him hard to be able to, to block. Uh, when he was playing linebacker, he was hitting the A gap. He was hitting the B gap. You never knew where he was coming from. Uh, I thought he was more dangerous, and it, and it allowed him to keep his linebacker instincts to be able to get off linemen and go make uh, tackles or shoot gaps for losses and stuff like that and, and still keep the integrity of the defense. So I wanted him to be a linebacker his first year, then that, that super spy guy his second and third year, but, like you know, he, he had other plans. Once he got a taste mm -hmm. of the sack game, it was over. You know, mm -hmm. and so he lined himself up over there at the defensive end. And like I say, every offensive coordinator worth their weight was like, thank you. Get somewhere where we can know where you are. And now we know how to run the rest of our offense. And so uh, basically, 
essentially, it boils down to this, doesn't it? You make you have the potential to make more money as a defensive end, especially based on that sack stat, than you do um, as far as how much money you can make. You can make more as a defensive end than a linebacker. Yes? Yeah, but you know what? It's the such thing as called a, a football player. And and when you're a football player and you just make plays, uh, you don't have to worry about the money. The money coming. You don't have to. You don't have to worry. If you, if you, you know, just think: fifteen sacks, uh, ten to twelve hits for losses, uh, six or seven fumble recoveries, a couple of interceptions, and you just had nineteen sacks. Who you think gonna get paid the most money? That dude is that dude that's in um in Cleveland. Who we gonna play the first game? Miles Garrett. Yeah. That's who gonna make the yeah. most money because he does yeah. all of that. Besides the yeah. interceptions, okay? Yeah. He causes sacks. He causes turnovers. He gets hits for losses. And he takes over games. What Micah is seeking is what I call game changers. Micah, I know where he's coming from. I can c- control him to a certain extent. Now, he's going to have games where he's hot. But is he going to have games where he take over and ch- change the, the face of the game? Miles Garrett does that on mm-hmm. a regular basis. You can count three, four times in a year. This kid going to do it. Now, the other kid, if he can stay healthy for the, for the Steelers, the, the Watts kid, he can mm-hmm. do the same thing. Both yeah. Bosa brothers, Lord knows, I'll be like, I'm glad y'all don't always be healthy because if y'all was always healthy, they'll do it five or six times a year. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's what, I, that's what I want for Micah. I want Michael when when he walk on the game, when he walk on the field, I never ask this question. Is Michael gonna take over this game? Mm. Uh I know he's a great pass rusher, but can he take over this game? Can, is this game at halftime 14-14? A 17-14. And, and, and we need a play. We need a sack and a fumble. Or oh, we need an interception. Or oh, we need a hit for loss. You know, is Micah going to do that for me? And, and when he gets to that level and that mentality, and that's what Zim and that's what Coach Quinn tried to provide for him, is that is – I'm telling you, now he's going to get paid, and, 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 and rightly so. I mean, he yeah, he give him his money. I, I don't begrudge no man that. But is he that total team takeover? Not yet. Not quite. Mm -hmm. So is it oversimplifying it to say uh, to say Miles Garrett and both of the Watts are significantly bigger men than what what Micah is? Micah is is 6'4". Micah's taller than me. He's 6'4". He's 240. Uh, Look at the draft this year. You're seeing defensive ends getting a little bit trimmer. <laughs> Linebackers seem like they're getting a little bit bigger. But mm-hmm. everybody's in that 240 to 255 range, running them four fours, four sevens, up to four sevens. And everybody's about in the same weight range. But now, can I look at you, Rad, and say, with that pretty silver hair? With that slickness, where you know, got a little Jimmy fuzz in your, little grease in your head, with that pretty yeah. smile, can I just yeah. tweak it a little bit and put you over here, or do I just let you keep doing what you're doing mm-hmm. and not let you get better? I got to tweak you. I sure. got to let you get a little bit better. I got to put you that camera light, boom, right here. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Or I got to put you up in the seat a little straighter. So we like, we, uh, we're rad. Rad's getting old. Look how he slouched you. Hey, let's sit yeah, up a little yeah, straighter, yeah. Rad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, yeah. let's go yeah. do not only the Mavericks, but let's do the Thunder too. Let's, let's expand his role. Hey, he's already doing the Rangers. Hey, let's put him out there with the Thunder. Let's expand his role. You know, let's, let's, let's remake Rad. Let's put him on Let Me Tell You Something, the Playmakers <laughs> podcast. Let's yeah. expand his role. Yeah. That's what all Zim horizons. is trying to do. Zim yeah. is trying to expand this kid's role. Yeah. And your experience with Zim is 
he's got a pretty good shot at doing that. Yes, if if, if this kid is willing to learn and be responsible, man, there's no stopping this kid. There's no stopping this kid. You know, I, I had never met a, a more selfish person than Micah Irvin. I've never met a more selfish person than Micah Irvin. I have never met a more selfish person than Troy Aikman. I've never met a more selfish person than Emmett Smith. But you know what all they had in common? Team concept. Mm -hmm. How can I help this team be the best it can be and in turn this team help me be the best I can be? So if I want to be all I can be, I'm going to have to accept the coaching. I'm going to have to be in the right place at the right time so when the plays come up, I can make them. Those are the ultimate selfish guys. And that's what I tell people. You know, when nobody more selfish than Charles Haley. Yeah. You know, but Charles Haley used to help me work out because mm -hmm. he said if I get Nate better, then, hey, I ain't got to stay out. I can stay out on the field of a shorter period of time because he's in yeah. better shape and he can block his man a little longer. Yeah. So I, I tell people, man, this is, selfish is not a bad thing if you have it within the team concept. Right, right. So uh, with your experience with Micah, does he have that? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. Okay. I just, I, I believe he can get it. I, I, I refuse to give up on kids, but now mm -hmm. I'm going to tell the truth. That's the difference between me and other folks. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I tell my wife, the great Michelle Doreen Newton. I was finna call her Murphy. When I use that I Doreen, say, you I forget use the call, your last name. Yeah, what are we doing Yeah, here? <laughs> I use the call her Michelle Doreen Murphy because that Doreen, boy, that's a that's an old lady name. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, my wife, I tell her, uh, don't, don't, great players, great players, man. You got to always love them. Great players. That, that Oh, man, go ahead. Right, I'm, I'm wondering. That's a, that's a senior moment. No, go no, it's on. good. I, and I, hey, I've sat with the two of you watching games on many occasions, and uh, she's a fan now. Yes. She's but a fan of the looking Cowboys. At it. But you're not you're not looking at it as a fan. You yeah. look at it differently. You know, I'm, I'm, but, I'm but a you fan. You look at it differently. But I look at it different. I look at it from the game, from the inside out. I yeah. look at the little things that that makes a difference in the games. You know, uh, wow. But anyway, man, we, we we it's hard. See, we we done did another show about Micah. We we. we <laughs> Yeah, he's a, he's a flashpoint. <laughs> yeah, he is, man. It, but I, what I want people to understand is. I'm always trying to speak the truth. You don't have to cut a kid to the ground. You don't have to uh, yeah. beat somebody down. You don't have to have the hot take. Oh, man, I, I want my show to go viral. Let me and Rad show go viral because I yeah. said something ugly. No, 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 no. You can you can speak the truth and, and, and be positive about it, you know? Yeah. And still go viral. Watch. Yeah. We're going to do it. We're going <laughs> to do it. Hey, um, so – this uh, with as many rookies as it appears the Cowboys will have to count on, right? They're going to yeah. count on this draft turning out really well. So that this type of thing, this OTA, then the mini camp, and then everything they can do, and every time they can be around their teammates, their veteran teammates in particular, this is good, right? The the, the Tyler Guytons of the world, the Cooper BBs of the world. I mean, all the young rookies that came in. They need this time, don't they? Oh, they do. They do just because they're going to go over the plays that they went over in the uh, rookie minicamp, and they're going to go over them again, plus another 10 or 20 more. And the more you know and the better you can comprehend and the quicker you can transform it to the field, the faster you can play. It's just when you're relaxed and you know the play and you know the variations off the plays, the quicker you can play, the quicker your athletic ability show, the quicker you uh, can, can be dominant and, uh, and help the team win. So are those two men, for example, and any of the other rookies that we think are going to be or need to be starters, 
are they getting all the reps with the ones right now, or is it better for them to think, hey, you're ch- you've got a challenger and and you've got to compete stop, against stop, this Rick. dude in order to get stop, that Rick. challenge? Stop. How long did it take Luca to just be the point guard? I mean, how long did it take Luca? How long did it take long, Jokic? What? They saw Jokic. They had already had a kid there. I can't think of the kid name. I think he oh, went yeah, to yeah, the yeah. They, Portland Trail. They had a kid already there, seven foot. This coach yeah. saw Jokic, and they traded that kid so quick it made his head spin. He didn't know he was going to get <laughs> traded. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Luca ran one little kid right up to New York somewhere. This little kid they had here, little point yeah. guard. I said, this, first of all, he wasn't Carlisle type of guard. First of right. all, and then when Luca came in, it like bye, bye. Yeah. Uh, see, that, that, yeah. I, I don't like. I love like Tyler Guyton, number one pick. Uh, they got in Doga at the left. They they been playing the the veteran on. Uh, man, forget that. Put Guyton right there, left tackle. You know, uh, the next OTA next week. Uh, put BB at the center. Let, let's just stop playing. And let's get this thing going. And if BB can't play center, then we, we got the other kids. Just tell them, hey, man, we got to get this kid reps. We drafted him to start. We love you. You will make this team. Keep being what you've been. You know, uh, and I want to call his name correctly. Uh, see that? Yeah, I already done moved on. Uh, Brock Hoffman. Yeah. Brock, we love you. And, I, cause I, and I'm going to tell you a little story, Rad, if you don't mind. Please. Okay, Eric Williams, first year, he sat next to me, at right, and I was the right tackle. And Eric was, you know, he was back up right tackle to me his rookie year. We went to training camp. I don't think we was two weeks in. Jimmy walked, you know, we was in the, uh, it was in this little room. I want to call it a little prayer room because we was at uh, uh, St. Edwards. St. Ed's, yeah, yeah I remember Saint that. So yeah. we, I think we in this, it's a big room, but I think it was a little prayer room off to the side. You know, and uh, so we we in the dorm. Jimmy throw the door open, looks around. How you gentlemen doing? We doing good, coach. Uh, I just want to let y'all know, Eric Williams is starting right tackle. Y'all have a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think I felt, bro? You you went to praying, I reckon. <laughs> oh man, hey, look at him, man. I almost went into the little prayer the little prayer uh, closet, man. I almost yeah, I almost went into, in my mind. I went into a little prayer closet. Like, Lord Jesus, what I'm gonna do? I don't have <laughs> yeah. a job. You know, yeah. but eventually I was the left guard. But anyway, uh, I, I didn't like what Jimmy did, and I, don't, I ain't like how he did it. But at least I ain't had to mess around trying to yeah. figure out what, what you know. He didn't wait to the third preseason game to say, "Well, big new." When we getting ready to back it out, that we just had a dress rehearsal was the third game. You know, right. depending on whether right. you had four or five preseason games, I ain't had to wait to the third uh, preseason game to figure out. Oh man, I ain't gonna be no starter, you know. So yeah, he got that done once, quick. Yeah, once Big E was named the starter, mm-hmm. he got all the reps, mm-hmm. and and you were at that time until you went over to the uh-huh. left side. No, and it didn't last today. Okay. When Jimmy said that, I walked up to him, and uh, after practice, and said, "Look here, Coach, you told me last year you wanted the best five guys." And I was the best guy, so you put one of the best five, and I was right tackle. He used to say, yeah, we know you're still one of the best guards, but you, you, you know, at tackle, you were better than these guys. I said, okay, coach, because he didn't give me no other choice. He said, you either took, take that right tackle job, uh, we can cut you. I'm like, wow. I went from left guard to right tackle to possibly the streets. Okay, Jimmy wouldn't have cut me. Now I know that now, but. Right yeah. then, he wanted me to play right tackle, so he he put the ultimate, you know, chop block on me. So I said, "But coach, you told me last year I was one." I say, "You mean to tell me Kevin Gogan and all the rest of you guys at guard are better than me?" I don't think so, coach. I say, "I left my left guard position. That's not fair. I should be a left guard. I should be back starting at left guard. Then nobody beat me out." That after he went to co- coach Wise, put Nate at left guard. He ain't make no big speech about it. All of a sudden, yep. I'm a left guard starting. Kevin Gogan was kind of the hard man out. I stabbed you in the back, Kevin. I'm sorry, but I had to. <laughs> 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 and uh, and as we speak, three, four Super Bowls later, baby. As we speak, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. The great wall, baby. Yeah. yeah. And uh, was Gogan still around for yeah, he any played of those another, Super He played Bowls? that year with us. He was a free agent after that and went to the Raiders and made buku money. Okay. Yeah. Buku okay. money. Made the Pro Bowl yeah. and everything. Yeah. Good. Good for him. Yeah. All right. So uh, that's cool. Great that's a fun story. He made more uh, money than me. Uh, did he? Yeah. With the Raiders? Yeah. 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 See? Got the last laugh. Yeah, he, he, he got still, the real he, last laugh because I think he was making two mil. Ooh, he was making some money back then. That was that big yeah. money, boy. Yeah, and he's probably still driving that truck he had in college. I oh, mean, he shot he, me he a picture amazing. of it, man. I, I I hope I didn't erase it, man. He shot me a picture of that truck, you man. Got one? Yeah. Yeah, he, oh, I remember man. he drove that for years at Valley Ranch. Yeah, man. Big Gog. Big Gog sent me a picture of that, man. Bless his heart. You know, because I used you to have it. a 454. And uh, he said, you remember that? I was like, yeah. And then he sent me a picture. He said, I still got my truck, man. Big Gog, oh, a hardcore fantastic. dude, man. Yeah, yeah. He was fun. He was funny like you, too. I mean, he was a, a fun-loving, you know, he'd crack on everybody and all that stuff, too. Gog was it, man. You... Gog, me, yeah. Gog, to it. Our whole offensive line could get after you, bro. Yeah, it's just so true. So true, yeah. So, uh, all right, so let's move on. Uh, is there anything else we need to talk about with the Cowboys? Uh, C.D. Lamb not being there, not a big deal, right? I, or is it? Pay C.D. Pay C.D., but see, they, they don't want – you know, uh, T. Higgins and the other kid with the uh, – is it Cincinnati? Uh, no, Minnesota Jefferson. Yeah. Uh, those kids haven't been paid. And, they, and I think they all got the same agent or work for the same firm, so all of them going to sit tight. You yeah. know, so they're going to sit tight, so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then um, we hear that Jerry will be a part of a, a series – that I think it's Netflix is doing. Yes. Uh, and it's behind the scenes and it's like, Jerry, like you've never seen before. Is this something um, you're interested in? Because maybe even you, Big Newt, will see some things that you didn't know happened in Jerry Jones' life. Man, I, you know, I, I got some, you know, one thing I love about Mr. Jones is he always been a good man to me and me and him, me and him I had some personal Moments, you know, I won't talk about and uh, whatever Mr. Jones do is good with me. Netflix, baby. Yep. Do it. Yep. Do it, man. I'm going to make sure I'm looking at it, watching it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm going to, man, I'm going to be locked in. I yeah. think it's going to be fascinating. Yes. So what really it, it, another so, year to be out? Yeah, I think it comes out around Christmas. Mm. And that's why people are speculating Cowboys game uh, around Christmas is going to be on Netflix, too. Right? They're going to have yeah. the whole Wow. The whole shebang. So, yeah, we'll see how that plays out. But uh, anyway, so let's talk about your Celtics, Nate. Man, they, that's the only um, conference final that's begun yet uh, as we tape this. But uh, my, they got a scare last night from them Pacers. <laughs> we don't have any playmakers. And let me explain. Celtics don't. The yeah. Celtics don't have playmakers. They have a guy, they have a team that when they play as a team, and I mean whipping the ball around, spacing, they look good. But the tighter the game uh, gets down, they don't. Two minutes left in the quarter, two minutes left in the half, two minutes in the fourth. They don't have an offense that can be manned like what Luka is able to do. Uh, even in a secondary role, Kyrie is able to do. They don't have mm -hmm. that guy that can boom, 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 hit that ball, be looking, looking for a shot, trying to create. Then all of a sudden, bam! Here we go. You see a lob going to the going to the rim, or you see somebody out in the corner. You know, my 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 Celtics gonna dribble that ball, they'll pound that ball. Then all of a sudden. They, they'll see they ain't got no shot, and with two seconds left, they just throw it to anybody. The guy's just been standing around for 12 seconds while you pound the ball brown and Tatum. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and that's where Jokic is different. That's where the, Alec, with the, the Alexander the Great, you know, yeah. Gildress yeah, with Gildress, 18 yeah. different names, you know, Roman names is great. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> this is where Anthony Edwards is great. You know, you say I, he he did that thing against Denver. I mean, he he was terrible in the first half. He said, "You know what? 
I'm finna play some shutdown defense, and I'm finna find my teammates yep. and get them open shots. We don't, we don't have that. And people can say what they yep. want about the Celtics. You win 64 games, and uh, 40 of them was, was team play games. 45 of them was team play games. And I know, you know, we, we missing the big guy. You know, or but Zingas, you're still yep. good enough. If you play on both ends of the court, you – you cannot outshoot on a consistent basis Rick Carlisle's team. These guys can flat out shoot. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. What, what Brown did, the basketball guards, thank you. You know, thank you. Because when, when he shot that ball, he had no space. It was a bad shot. Because he once again he jammed himself in a corner and he had mm-hmm. to just let it go. <clears throat> and you know it kind of hit the backboard, right? You notice it kind of scraped yeah. on the backboard. So yeah, yeah, it wasn't a pure shot. So the basketball no. guards looked down on him. His work during the offseason paid off for him. So, but you can't do that, Rad. You yeah. you can't, you, you, I wouldn't even worry about being in a shootout. I'll be like, you got we're gonna play some defense, fellas. And we're going we gonna to move this ball around and force Rick Carlisle guys to expend a little energy on defense. You know, but the they, they basketball guards blessed me last night. I, I take a win as a win because, you know, now we got – now it's a six-game series. It's, you know, because I figure yeah. it's going to go – I figure it's going to go seven. If they yeah. – if they if we win this one coming up, what we need to do is take that first game from Indiana, win this one, we know we notorious for winning a game, everybody patting us on the back, and then lose the second game. That is mm-hmm. that is what the Celtics do. We'll mm-hmm. win the first game and we'll lose the second game. But we can't do that. We shouldn't do that. We should be ready and amped because you got to scare your life. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know when the big kid coming back. You know, uh, I, wow. All right. Wow. So we'll keep a close eye on that. We'll also be watching two Dallas teams in the conference finals. Nate, it's the first time in 23 years that two teams that share an arena are in the conference finals together, which is it's just amazing right. uh, that, you know, the American Airlines Center is going to play host to the Western Conference Finals in both hockey and basketball this year. But let's right. talk about the Mavs uh, getting rid of my, uh, you know, my other team, if you will, the Oklahoma City Thunder, man. That mm. was I didn't think they'd win game six. I give them credit. That was a heck of a game. That was a heck of a fourth quarter. Let me tell you something. Thank you. Lou Ka. Luke Ka. Luca played this thing. Luca got that early tech. And now let's stop and think. Let's stop and think, people. Luca played the refs and he played the NBA League front office. Mr. Shiny Head. Yeah, he played <laughs> even you, Mr. Shiny Head. And I'm talking about the, the commissioner. Luca, like, I dare you throw me out. I'm a superstar. So I get. So what? I got a technical. He played that thing so pretty. Do you think they're gonna throw? Did you? I got to thinking. I say, do you think they really gonna throw Luca out of this game? No. no. Luca knew it, and everybody figured it out after a while. They ain't throwing Luca out, man. And they kept this thing just close enough, just close enough, so Luca could take over. Hey, my hat's off to you, bro. Luca, you played him like a drum. You played him like a good guitar with all the strings tight, baby. You're like a banjo, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, and we talked about that last week. You were talking about, Luca. you got to go do it, right? Yeah. And, and in a way, again, you know, he's on the injury report this series as well with a knee and an ankle, right? So right. he's fighting through some stuff, but most people are, especially this time of year. But yes. still, he is, and he did it, right? He did it. He, 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 took, he had triple doubles in almost every one of those games. He, he did it. And the thing about it, they have not. Now, it's guys on their team 
that has. The others at Shaq and a few other guys that they call, the others have been playing lights out. But Luka and Kyrie together, I mean, just flowing, it hasn't happened. Mm-hmm. It hasn't happened. I think it happened uh, against uh, the Clippers once when mm-hmm. both of them it just did. was flowing. But other than that, yeah. it's been a half here, a quarter there. These guys have not just uh, lit it up. And uh, But they're going to have to do this. They're going to – this, this – this Wolves team gonna play some defense. They come in yes, at they, they they're gonna play some defense. Yep. And uh so uh at, when they're up there in Wolves country, they're gonna get the calls. Like when they down here in Mavs country, they're gonna get the calls. So uh, they, they, uh this is gonna be nice. This yeah, th- it's been a long time since you're saying, man, I I, I wanna see this. I really, even more than the Denver Mavericks, I wanna see this Wolves uh I want to see this Wolves Mavericks, man. I, I really do, man, because a pack of wolves after after a bunch of wild horses, man. Who somebody gonna either yeah. get kicked in the mouth or the <laughs> rear end gonna get snapped? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a heck of a point, man. It's it's gonna be a great series. You thinking? Uh, you thinking this one goes seven two? Oh man, it, it's I don't know because uh, <laughs> the Mavs notorious for winning the first game, losing no, no, the no. second. No, no, no. Opposite. Yeah, uh, Jason yeah, Kidd, they, just, they notorious for winning, losing yeah, the first lo- game. Sorry. Losing, yeah, they are notorious. Yeah. They, they, I'm, I'm messing them up with my Celtics. They are notorious for losing that first game, and they never panic. Yeah. No. Nah. Let me tell y'all something. Let me say this before we get off there. Do not discount Jason Kidd. Yeah. Do not discount Jason Kidd because... He not only can talk to Luca, but he can also talk to Kyrie, and the other guys just fall in line. They, they, what they have is something special, man. Sixteen and four, or whatever the end of the season. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, you knew that they could beat the Clippers. Everybody knew that they can beat the Clippers. But man, what they did to them to the to the Thunder, the sixth game, Luca masterpiece, baby, masterpiece, yeah. Luca. Yeah, yes. that's the number one seed. Yes. That's the f- top seed they beat in the West. Yes. Yeah. The top seed, Absolutely. the fourth, the number four seed, right, or the fifth seed. Was that the fourth seed? They were the fourth. Clippers were the fourth. fourth. Yeah, so they and beat now, the first this is and the, a, I think and a this fourth. is the third yeah. seed. Uh, yeah. Denver was two and Minnesota's three, yeah. Yeah. So it's been all teams high, more highly – rated, you know, than, yes. the, than the Mavs all the way through this. They yes. haven't had home court advantage once yet, and they won't. Yeah. I don't know if they would against the uh, Pacers. They might, but they wouldn't against the Celtics either. That's right. So, damn. Man. We don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Yeah. But yeah. that's what we do. Hey, we, we can do that. That's yeah, true. That's what sports talkers do. <laughs> yeah. I've made a career of it, Nate. Yes. Uh, and and you, you've done so well in your career after football with this, too. So, man, it's always fun talking to you, my brother. And uh, we, we appreciate you as always. Hey, man. Love you. Tell your wife and everybody we say hello, man. Spencer Bash, you got to be on time, baby. Don't edit that out. You got to get got to get your time right, Spencer. Got to quit laying <laughs> around that bed, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. We'll do it again next week when we say, let me tell you something. Something.